Yum, yum. All right. Greg here from Pixel Fondue, kicking off part four here. I feel like I need to get this done because I have actual work I need to do. And I'm more interested in this than the project I'm doing. So need to get this done. So you know, last part three, we did this middle part. I'm going to do a little more work on it. Um, one, I noticed I've got some intersecting going on down here. So I'm going to fix these uh, gold guys first. And then I'm going to do a little more work on it before I put in the prongs. So this, I'm just going to stretch these or squish them a little bit and move them a little bit. You'll notice I'm using this, um, you know, isolate. I call it isolate select because I used to use Maya a lot. But in Moto, it's just like uh, hide, you know, inactive. So this is our, my active mesh item. This just turns the inactive on and off. It is so much better on a pie menu, just swiping it like that. So I definitely, you know, this is, I just modified my um, control one pie menu, right? Toggle lights, cameras, wireframe. Basically, you're just toggling visibility of ina inactive meshes. So it's, it's the toggle one. It's it's like, if you're going to be fast in Moto, you know, know your control one, control two. And I've got action centers on control three and fall offs on control four. Those are really essential to knowing. Anyway, so, okay, got this, and I'm just going to do a little more um, work on the front of these, just adding some more bevels just to give it a little more visual complexity. Alt-C for loop slice, right-click to um, get some more uh, loops in there. I think two's good. Actually, let's do four, and then let's, these are, make sure it's in, symmetrical and then um, squeeze the middle one and what I'll do is um, alt three to make a polygon selection I don't actually want the ones on the edges selected though so I'm gonna deselect those there and deselect them here so I just have the facing ones and the rear facing ones selected and I'm going to bevel those forward. And then I'm going to shift um, arrow down to narrow my selection. And I think it's fine to have, uh, I'm not going to select that. I want actually it to look like a channel. So I'm going to hit B again. And just this time I'm going to go inward. Honestly, I kind of like it outward. I think I'll do that. Okay, so that's just a little more. Yeah, maybe I'll get inward. Like so. Just to give it a little more sort of complexity there. I'm not going to do any rounding. Maybe just the rounded edge shader for a micro bevel on that. But okay, so that's better. So I, I really kind of like the look of these copper coils. And so I think I'm going to add it around this end piece as well. I thought, I think that might look kind of cool. So get some coils wrapped around this. And so what I'll do is shift H to hide everything but this. Yeah, so I'm just gonna grab this whole piece, control C copy, I can U for unhide, bring everything back on here. And in for new mesh, control V, put this guy here. This is just a temp mesh, right? So I need to grab the polys that I want to use to do the wrapping. So I don't want this bottom part and I don't want um, let's go to the front here. I don't want uh, really any of this. So I'll just kind of paint select that, get rid of it, go to the front and Loop slice here, not loop slice, loop select. Let me just turn off symmetry for a second. Let's do a try to uh, select close loop. So shift, open bracket. Okay, that looks good. Then I'm gonna uh, shift arrow down and I'm going to delete all of those. And on the back, I'm going to try this again. I'm just gonna try to do a select close loop, shift right bracket, there we go, delete that. And yeah, I just need to delete a couple of these guys in the front and we're ready to go. So just these and middle mouse drag the rest of these guys. And in the back as well.
Okay. Great. All right, delete those. And then I'm going to do a push operation just to sort of move everything off the surface a little bit. So when I wrap the curves around here, they don't intersect with the original one. I don't want the curves to be laying on the surface. So before I convert these edges to curves, I need to push them away from the surface. So under deform and push. Push is an underutilized tool. So is slide in my opinion. So I'm gonna push these guys a little bit. Um, maybe two millimeters is all I need. And then I'm going to select a couple edges. Alt L for ring select, L for loop select. Control tab, do my two curves. That's under the uh, edge menu on the left, by the way, if you don't have it on the pop-up. So yeah, spline curve, new mesh. And so now we got um, a new curve mesh here. You can see it in wireframe a little better. So there's our curves. And so um, I'll delete this sort of temp mesh I don't need anymore. Press in for a new mesh. And this will be, we'll just call coil, uh, coil front, I guess. And on this, we'll just do what we did before. We're gonna add a circle with a radius of two millimeters. And then we're gonna do a curve sweep that uh, the curve, right? The, the uh, curve mesh. There we go. So there it is. Let's turn on uh, uh, advanced uh, lighting here. So yeah, they're they're flipped. So let's flip them. We could just flip them right here in the uh, operator. And then I need more segments. You can kind of see they're not. I don't have enough segments on there. So I can you know press C and right click and drag, or I could just go over here to steps and just type something in like forty. Looks pretty good. And then we want these guys to be copper. And so copper. And then, yeah. Now that looks kind of better, right? Kind of cool. There's some copper, more additional sort of copper there. Control S for save. And then, yeah. So let's punch some holes into these bad boys and get our prongs in there. So look at it from the front, or the front rather. And here you can see the lighting is a little dull. So in, in this particular version of Moto, which is six, I think just 16, uh, advanced viewport, you can use scene plus environment for the lighting uh, or default viewport, which will give you that good sort of default modeling lights. What we need is default lights plus environment lighting to get that nice sort of gradient um, shading that looks good on our stuff. You can see that sort of blue and yellow gradient, that sky gradient on there and then uh, but with default lighting. So that is coming in, in a, the next like little update. But I'm just going to duplicate my directional light here and change the Y to 45 just to get more light on the subject. Um, new mesh item, we'll just call prong or prongs. How many times can I say prongs? Uh, okay, let's look at the front here. And so I'm just going to isolate this. We're going to use... Um, uh, mesh uh, uh, primitive slice. So with primitive slice, you want to set um, the operation to subtract. It's my head's probably covering up down to the slice effector. You want to be under subtract, and uh, the type rep rectangle axis Z looks good. Okay, so you know, like again, this is a like a deeply flawed tool. It, it could be so much better, and hopefully, it can improve. It should really be something akin to hard ops on, on Blender. Um, I really think it could be that. It just needs, it's just really freaking clunky right now. Anyway, I'm gonna use it. So I'm just gonna drag out a, um, yep, a circle, or not a circle, a square. And so it's on both sides there. And I wanna make sure it's symmetrical. So maybe, uh, maybe 12 millimeters. Yeah, okay, you can grab the blue diamond to sort of position it better and I'm going to rotate the bank to 45 degrees so it's it's an actual diamond and yeah so I definitely want diamond shaped or sort of rectangular shaped prongs on this instead of you know cylindrical just to mix it up a little bit so that looks pretty good I should be able to shift click up here and just continue to drag out and again it was just uh, numerically 0.01 whoops 0.012 and 0.012 and use the blue diamond to position it. Like so, okay, okay. So now we've got some holes there to run 
the prongs through. So let's do that. So select my prong. And so I'll just start with the I'll just start with a square. And make sure what was it? Twelve? I think it was twelve. So let's do like uh eleven eight or something. <laughs> Point oh one one eight. Okay. Millimeters. Oh, that was twelve. That's interesting. It, it's doing radius, not diameter. So uh, 24, so let's do like 23. Okay, like so. Can I bank these guys in here under any properties? I cannot. Um, okay, so that's fine. So we'll just do this and let's just uh, drag it out. Use the tool handles like so. So we just need to kind of get started here. And then I'm going to double click biggies and rotate 45. Not 456, 45. And then uh, move it down a little bit. Okay, yeah, looks pretty good there. Just eyeballing it. And then I'll worry about the back in a second. But um, so yeah, these guys, let's, let's sort of scooch up. And then I'm going to uh, add some loops. One here. And then one here. Okay. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Then I'm going to grab these and they're going to extend like this above the front of this thing, right? Kind of like that. Uh, I'm going to control C and I can just actually shift control and drag to copy it. Put the other one here. Yeah, okay, looking good. Okay, we can definitely stun somebody with this. All right, so we just hit save. And like I said, I'm going to detail those out. So I think I'm just going to add in a quick um, handle <laughs> just so I can wrap my head around what the handle is going to look like. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to go to... Uh, let's use the polygon tool and turn on snapping. Maybe turn off symmetry. Turn on snapping. Turn on my grid. And just I'm just going to snap out a sort of what a handle would look like on this. I don't know. Something like this. You get the idea. I will obviously detail this later, but I just gotta have something here to see the proportions are kind of right. Um, so let me control X, copy that or cut that in for a new um, mesh item. We'll just call this a handle temp. We'll just call it handle, that's fine. Handle and paste it in there. Just uh, let's do a quick, um, Thicken on it, maybe. Just sort of thicken it out, and then we're gonna, yeah, we'll just center it on X. It's nice to have these XYZ centers just right here as well on my little pop up. Uh, okay, yeah, something like that. So there's gonna be this whole rail sort of system below it. I could block that in real quick as well. It's just gonna, it's gonna kind of be like, like this, like a support. like that so i need to model that in but this is sort of like you get it is it starting to look like a stun gun of some sort maybe these maybe these things are all too high i don't know all right i'm back I had to go to my daughter's basketball game uh yeah these guys so let's do something with these uh prongs here they need a little more detail i think so i'm gonna go to the right and i'm gonna grab uh I don't use this one a lot. Polygon slice is kind of a blunt force instrument, but just drag it down. It's going to slice through everything. Just make sure your Z is the same. Mine's just a little bit off. It doesn't really constrain to the right, you know, in a linear fashion very well. Um, and then that'll create one slice through all four of those. I'm just going to, in fact, if you want to see, I'll just isolate it, go to wireframe, and then I'll just middle mouse and let go, and then I'll make another one. So we've got these two edges right here 
And then I'm just going to go to Polly and grab uh, all of these guys and going to go back to showing everything. And then, whoops, I actually, oh, I got a middle mouse, grab all these guys. Whoops, go to polygon mode, middle mouse, grab them all. Not those, just those. And then sort of get these, they're bent in just a little bit. Let me see. Kind of hugging the curve a little bit more. So kind of like that. Yeah, it looks a little more badass. Okay, cool. And then I'm going to just grab all these edges. Alt-L for um, a ring selection. Then L to get the rest of the loop. And then I'm going to do a bevel and just get a rounded corner on here with about a round level of four. I'm fine with... I want them square-ish. I like them sort of square. And then I, what I'll do is grab these middle mouse drag, grab these guys, bevel it out just a little bit. And then I'm going to go to deform and um, do a radial align to make them into circles. And then bevel them out some more. And it's bevel, it's more of an extrude, but... Uh, shift click one more time. We'll go down real low like this. Control click to get a boundary. Edge bevel these down. Just get a nice little, that's probably too many. Maybe something like two uh, round sections. Then these guys will do the same thing. Whoops, don't want that one. Just, whoops, not that. This and this and then we're going to bevel just to kind of smooth it out like that. It's kind of a kind of a bullet shape. Yeah, I like that. I think that looks kind of cool. And then remember how I was trashing Moto's um, little uh, quad fill? Well, I was actually doing it wrong. One of the <laughs> I was doing it wrong. There's a one of the users or commenters pointed out in the first video. I'm just going to um, select boundaries here. And it actually works pretty well. I just didn't click grid. So if I push in on that and I go to edge and I say uh, fill quads, make sure I fill with grid pattern and it looks good. If I don't have grid pattern, um, it looks like that, which is looks like shit. So, or crap, sorry. Uh, fill quads, grid pattern, looks good. Looks good. So alt three to convert that to uh, polys, just shift arrow up and I'm going to turn these tips gold and yeah that looks we're getting there that looks like more formidable more formidable stun gun but on prey you don't really use the stun gun on people so much you use it on you know like robots and uh, you know I guess phantoms but I don't know I'm just going to do a little bevel here just to smooth it out a little bit so it's not too geometric, but I think that looks pretty good. And then on the back, I think I'm just gonna do what I did earlier, just bevel it out just a little bit, or extrude it, whatever, you know, it's the bevel tool, but I'm just ex shifting it, not insetting it. And then um, again, go to uh, deform. You can also sh hold shift, click on the tab, it'll do it as a popover. If you wanna keep that one tab open, just hit radial. Click, there's my radial, and then, uh, B and just um, extend a little bit more and then I think I'm gonna grab let's see yeah I'll just I'll just shape these out a little bit so inset a little bit shift click and go inside a little bit like that and then I'm gonna ring select the outside and bevel and just push it out a little bit just a little bit go to boundary bevel Feel like yeah, I got too. Did I get too many rings here? No, I don't. Okay, it looks good. Oh, I had an extra edge loop in there. That's all right. Bevel and uh, get that going. All right, I don't really need this, but that's fine. I can delete it, I guess. Or I can just use it to make even more detail. The most detailed little screw holes ever. We're just gonna. Push it out just a little bit. Oh yeah, that is very intricate. Okay. 
uh, boundary and I'm just going to smooth it all the way down and then press uh, move while all those rings selected. Whoops. Alt 3 for, for polys. Arrow up and then I just want it kind of flush almost. Okay, like that. All right, I like it. Cool. Um, all right, so that looks pretty good. And then, yeah, I think we'll stick that with our, with our, we'll probably better make these metal except for the gold part. In fact, I'll just press four, select these guys, uh, press M and do metal. Probably have to do some better materials here eventually. Yeah, I don't like that same metal. I like, I like a lighter sort of colored metal. We'll just call it, um, press M, we'll call it metal light. And over in the shading, shader tree, let's just uh, right click on metal and say copy. And metal light, we will right click and say paste. And then I'm just going to bring this up a little bit and lower my roughness to like 10, so it's a bit shinier. Bring this up a little more. Just bring green down a tad. Okay, something like that. Okay, looks good, fine. Uh, okay, moving on. I think I need um, a bit of a site, so I'm gonna put the site right here. So yeah, so I'll just I'm just gonna punch a hole here, like so. Let's grab these polys, delete, and then I'll just uh, bridge this closed. Like that. I'm just, yeah, creating a, just a, just a, a notch. And then I'll um, take these two guys, press move, hold shift control, and just offset it a little bit. And then uh, we'll just grab the edge here and with symmetry on press move and move it in just a little bit I just want a little bit of a gap around it and then I'm going to extrude it right click to place your tool handle and the reason I didn't bevel is bevel would not keep those two front polygons you would lose those if you just press bevel so yeah, and those front two polygons, I think I need to flip, right? Q to drop the tool, control to, uh, and then F for flip. Huh, I feel like those are, I'm just gonna delete these guys. One second, shift A, hide everything. Something funky was going on there. Yeah, okay, so just uh, bridge that closed. Okay, good. Unhide. And so this, I want that shiny metal again. And so I don't think I want this ridge in the middle. So let me just use my alignment tools here. Grab the bottom two and this, and then um, align down with Ateria. And same with these two. Control five on my computer, align down. And I'm just kind of seeing how this is uh, looking here. All right, so we have a this is, I do want this to have a definite, let me just move it forward just a little bit, like a definite um, gap around there. So it looks like a piece that's fitted in. And I'm going to bevel in a little bit. Shift click, go up. Like I said, this should be like a should be like a little laser, like a little laser pointer or a little laser guide. So I, I really want just like a cylinder in here. Oh, I I know what I'll do. Okay, so yeah, we'll do something like this. Let me actually grab those verts and then grab these verts. I'm just gonna move everything up a little bit. This may not work, but we'll give it a try. Grab these two. Uh, we're gonna bevel the points and then right click and create more points. Oh, that's always does that, right? Okay, so we'll just, we'll get, we'll get our four points and then we'll use the um, add edges, uh, add uh, points on the edges, which is a 
new one for Moto 16, I think. So on edge, you want to edge subdivide and do edge subdivide just one more time to get some more points on there. I'm going to do one more um, edge subdivide. I'm not on a poly budget, so I can make it as detailed as I want. So, okay, so now we'll, um, yeah, deform, radial, boom, looks pretty good. And then maybe uh, make sure I get my default hauling there. So left mouse is just radius. Okay, um, Alt-3 to convert those to uh, polys, and I'm going to bridge those two guys together. And then I'm going to bevel these sides down, like so. It kind of looks like a site a little bit. Except, like I said, I want it, it shouldn't be like a... <laughs> it's way too small for iron sights. It should be like a little laser. So let me just... Um, Isolate this guy real quick. I want some more. Uh, do a ring select. I don't need these two. And bevel. Get make that a little bit rounded. Yeah, a little bit rounded like that. And then a little um, loop and boundary and a little rounded on the edges as well. Really, I just need the top edge, right? The bottom edge isn't going to be uh, visible. Something like that. Okay, fine. Got it. That's looking okay. Let me just uh, maybe bevel the edges of this really quickly, and then I'll put in a little laser sight finder in there. So looking through it, I'm going to go to my um, maybe 64. Something like this. Yeah, okay. So maybe we'll work a wire into the back, the back side over here. When we do our wires at the very end, and this is just gonna be like the front of the um, laser finder. So we just, uh, Bevel that down a little bit, and in. This is going to be our our lens, basically. So go to the back. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to go to our sphere. Put it on Z. Oh, that's just really ugly to see in advanced viewport. Advanced viewport looks great in uh, perspective. It looks awful in these side views. If you have um, if you have a ambient occlusion on, which I usually do when I model, because I think it's a helpful thing for modeling. So we'll just go, yeah, you know, something like this. So let me just hide everything and do a close loop select, grab this, and then from the side, Alt-A, automatic action center, squish that lens down a little bit, unhide, see everything. And I just need to uh, scale it up a little bit. And I'll give that a lens material later. I guess it's not a lens. It's a laser lens. Laser comes out of a lens, right? Of course it does. Prism, it's a lens. Okay, fine. It looks like a laser. We'll just, uh, yeah, in the back we'll have a sort of battery attachment or a, a um, wire attachment on it, which we'll put in later. So maybe give it a couple of segments. Okay, so I need to do something. Yeah, delete that, and I'll use Moto's homegrown quad fill. And uh, yeah, where's quad fill? Quad fill, fill quads. Okay, there we go. Um, this is like a. Yeah, I think that'll work. Maybe make this just a little bit of a. A little bit of a ring here, like this. Get this one and this one and bevel it down pretty smooth. All right, that looks all right. I think that'll work. Cool. 
Cool. Okay. Enough screwing around here. So that's going to be our laser sight. Go back to advanced. Oh, the day that the advanced viewport is finished, I will be very happy. So, yeah, does that look stupid? I think it looks okay. Maybe like a little laser sight. Okay, fine. Fine. It's a little tiny baby laser sight. Well, it's in the future. Um, okay, so... Actually... Let me expand. Let me, let me just grab these... points there really quick. Move this back a little bit. Like this. So again, this is just, uh, this thing is just all stand-in, so that'll, oh my gosh, I really want to get those done this, this episode. Uh, why don't I get the front finished up? So we obviously, I don't think we need to fill this whole, this thing up with stuff, but it just can't have a big hollow tube here. So let's uh, give it a, let me select this guy and get a cylinder in there. Like so, let's move it up a bit here. And yeah, I think I'll just put some, hmm, sort of fill this up. I want a bit of an indent there like this. It's a pretty shallow cylinder. And what should we do with this? Maybe just a slight, uh, a slight inset with a couple of right click and drag, get a couple of segments in there, loop select that, get a get a channel going. I'm going to yeah, we'll just get rid of these ingons and give our fill quads on there. Quad fill, fill quad front as well. Control R for redo. And then I wanted to I don't really want to boolean anything. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna detail this out a little bit. So do a uh, just a rectangle. Yeah maybe uh, maybe this will look cool. Just go down the front like this. Um, Push it out the front, let's see. Oops, there's my rectangle, it's in the back. Move it to the front, center it on X, center it on Y, Alt-1 for the edges. Let me just uh, actually give this um, that metal color. Let's see. Can you see it? Oh, I need to flip it. So there it is. And then I'm going to Alt-1 to convert the polys to verts, and I'm just going to round those edges a little bit with a vert bevel. Gives like a bull nose look, right? Like if you uh, do any design at all, like that bull nose mat or shape in After Effects you can do. Okay, and then, yeah, let's just uh, extrude it out or thicken it. It's fine. A little bit. Grab this. Bevel in. Shift click. Bevel down. Just a little. Uh, there's three segments, so we've got our channel. We'll just sort of repeat that indented channel structure here. And I think I'm going to put a couple s screws there or something, maybe. Uh, this is pretty pretty basic, huh? So it looks stupid? Maybe that just looks stupid. I don't know. I'm just going to keep it for now. You saw that coming for you. 
We need something there, so that's what we have for now. Just that. I mean, I'll put a bolt on either side. I don't know. There's got to be. I don't know. That's fine. Let me just make this that black plastic that I've got set up already, and then this will be glass. So let me just call it glass. I believe I have a little material preset for glass here. Glass. Okay. There we go. All right. All right, I'm gonna wrap this up. I think we need just a little separation on these guys between the materials. So I'll select a loop. Just double click to select the loop and do a edge bevel just to get a gap. Alt three, maybe a little bit bigger. Alt three to convert to polys. Um, just a regular bevel, we'll just need one segment. And so just, just inset, whoops, inset, not, uh, or shift, not inset, just shift. Shift down a little bit. Just to get a yeah separation there. So Q to drop the tool. Then if you hold shift and, and just grab a couple and get a loop, you can get those polys and make sure we make those the white metal, metal white. And so yeah, that just looks a little, a little more realistic there. So the pointy things are separate things. And then I'm just gonna do one more thing. I just, I don't like, I gotta confess, I don't like my black plastic here it's just too too big too boring so i don't know it needs something it needs something um why don't i let's try like maybe like a window to see some electronics on the inside so i'm just going to shift um select to hide everything else so all right well let's just give it a try let's just let's just grab some polys here, maybe down to this edge of this bulge, and um, I'll just see what that looks like. If I do a shift um, right bracket, it'll do close selected loop, and then I just need to get these on the inside too, so I can bridge a bridge across. Seems right. Oh, don't don't do my opposite loop. Moto gets that wrong more than fifty percent of the time. Okay, paint select. Um. All right, let's just do a boundary selection, and then we'll do an edge split of maybe two millimeters. So not much of one, and then I can. Uh, double click these guys and do a boundary selection and bridge them together and then do the same for this boundary selection and uh, bridge them together bridge do we have a bridge um, okay and then these guys I'm just gonna maybe make them this glass material and unhide Uh, starting to look a little Flash Gordon-ish. I don't know, man. I'm, my thinking is if I put some more details in here, just some more electronics, like let's just let's just preview this, copy this stuff in there, and see what it looks like. Just Alt Control or Control Shift just to drag them in here, sort of. I have stuff in here. Does that look cool or not? Definitely trending towards um, steampunk, but I do think it looks. Look at the inside ones. I do think it looks cooler than just all that black. So I'll work on that, but I do think that's, there's something there. Copy this over. Got to experiment, right? 
But I think I think with refractions that could look kind of cool when it's rendered. And yeah, it's it's getting pretty steampunky, but lean into steampunk and embrace the steampunk. It's got a sort of steampunk prey does has a little bit of the steampunky feel to uh, the architecture and whatever. Okay, all right, we'll save it here.